right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the inaugural edition of the Loud and Live Sports Podcast. No better way to kick it off with some very special people here, none of which are more important than my man to my left, Mr. Matt O'Keefe, the president of Loud and Live Sports. Not a guest, he's actually a co-host of mine. And then we have on the other side, some also two uh, notable talent. folks. The talent is correct. We've got Mr. <laughs> Patrick work. Vellner and the four-time fittest man on earth, Matt Fraser. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, Great thank to be here, man. It's been fun, right? Yeah, I think we're going to have a really good time chatting about a bunch of stuff. Um, again, nothing really planned. We want this to be off the cuff. The idea is just to have some fun conversation. And uh, again, Loud and Live Sports, sports agency specializing in events. We produce the Wadapalooza, the West Coast Classic. We also produce three other events as well, the Granite Games. We have the Mayan CrossFit Classic and the Madrid CrossFit Championship, all of which are coming your way. Outside of that, we also represent and manage athletes and then also perform some marketing services that I'm sure Matt can talk about on a later edition of the podcast. For sure. You, that was good. Yeah, yeah little little elevator pitch of what we do here at Loud and Live. And two of our athletes, Pat and Matt, here with us. Um, guys, how has your time in Miami been thus far, this time around? Matt, go ahead. So, so far, so good. You know, uh, we've literally just been hanging out, training, eating some good food, uh, trying to survive the heat. And uh, yeah, it's good. Having fun. Yeah, we managed to knock out the second open workout this morning together, which was nice. I think that being a long, kind of miserable workout was nice to have some to have some, some company. company to do that with. <laughs> so that was kind of nice. But yeah, other than that, we haven't been too busy. I was hanging out at the FIBO Expo today, and I know Matt's got a couple things going on tomorrow. So it's been pretty chill, though. I agree. I'm trying not to. I'm trying to get you know a little sun, a little color while I'm out here. Enjoy the heat before I go back up north, and it'll be fine. There's no enjoying this heat. It's no, so no. muggy. I have to agree, unfortunately, except for around when Wadapalooza comes because a little bit cooler. But you guys have both been to this past year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Th this last year was my first time ever coming, um, and I had so much fun. So I was like, all right, I'm putting this on the calendar for next year. I'll be back. If you guys didn't know, Matt was actually building the rig the majority of the time. At least he spent like three days literally as what we call a workhorse. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Uh, you know, the big part of it is just I just in love, I just love working with my hands. So it's, you know, it's literally like a Lincoln Logs kit for adults putting up a rogue rig. Um, but then the other part was, you know, O'Keefe is with me every competition and just getting anything and everything I ever need. And so now this is his event so where he's doing all the work. So I was, I just showed up a couple of days early and I was like, point me in a direction wherever you need me. I'll go do it for yeah, return or the three favor days. a little bit. Yeah. Fine. Try, try to pay back yeah. this debt over the last six and man, years. I remember seeing O'Keefe a few times during that event and he needed it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like every now and then he kind of try to you'd stop him somewhere and he'd try to check in on you and be like, are you okay? You good? You need anything? He looks like he hasn't slept in like three days or <laughs> eaten probably when, when you see him at, but coffee for the when last you see him at one hours. in the morning and he has a C4 in his hand and you're like, Ugh. what number is that? He's like, it's number five for the day. <laughs> and you just like lift the can out of his hand and give him a water. And you're like, okay, you need you need water in your life. Yeah, that sounds. You know? He was I'm working gonna, hard. He definitely <laughs> needed the help. He needed the support. I'll, I'll have to, I'll have to say though, if I looked poorly, it's probably because my C4 levels were coming. Yeah. Was, exactly. You know? But that must have been weird for you too, though, Matt. You're used to filling that other role for both Pat and Matt, being on the other side of things. Went out of competition with these guys. Was there any bit of like discomfort not being able to be there for Matt and Pat and having to be on the other side and receiving help from them as opposed to the other way around? Yeah, for sure. I think it's. Um, I think I've told the story a little bit when Matt and Sammy text and said, we're coming in on Monday and Matt's like, I'm coming down. You're going to put me to work. I was like, Oh no, 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 no. You come in on Wednesday. <laughs> it's okay. Ahead. It's okay. And I was like, he's like, no, really? You're just going to drop me off. So I pick him up at the hotel and I legit dropped him off to the road crew. And it was like, as those days went by leading up, it was like, it made me more comfortable, but yeah, it was a little uneasy. Like that's usually my environment to be, helping them behind the scenes um and i really didn't obviously have the bandwidth or ability to do that that weekend these guys were great so it was fun i can speak I'm, to matt being a tremendous help there's no I'm, doubt I'm about pretty, it we needed pretty you. sure jacob got in trouble for that oh man right. I, I was they, getting those the, like, texts yeah the the head guy on the road crew and like i'd be up in the scissor lift you know just like bolting together a rig and he'd be getting texts from bill and katie like, what is Matt doing up there? Get him down. <laughs> and oh, yeah. and Jacob's like, yo, he's an adult. Like, he can do what yeah. he wants. Like, you're you like know? a fragile person. <laughs> you're an asset. Oh, no. Like, wrap him in bubble wrap. And <laughs> it's like, uh, I'm going to be fine. I know. It was, it was your birthday, and you were working. Over was a weekend. Yeah. Was it? Yeah, yeah. They were, they were, your birthday, you were building rigs on your birthday. Did he spend a birthday 
No. No, I think it was my birthday like a couple days before. Like I came in like from Wednesday, like maybe? Germany or something. Uh, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. because it was this last year I forgot my birthday. My dad called me that night, like as I was loading onto a plane and just like, hey, what's going on? You know, we're just kind of shooting the shit for a couple minutes. And then like, I was like, hey, like I, I need to go. I'm getting on the plane. And he was like, oh, hey, well, I got you. Happy birthday. And I went, oh, no, I forgot no. my birthday. Again. <laughs> Better that way. How old are you? 29 now? 29, yeah, pushing I'm, I'm 30. I'm about to be 30. Oh, so, 20s are almost coming oh, to an end. What about you, Pat? Gross. How old are you? I'm also 29. 29, uh-oh. It just, it's wild because like I always think of myself, like when someone asks, like, how old are you? I'm like, oh, I'm 17. Nope. <laughs> yep. 29. <laughs> Just keep. I like to think like twenty four. Like I wouldn't need to go yeah. seventeen. At least twenty one. <laughs> just least keep. Tw- just keep acting like you're seventeen, and it's fine. I mean, I, yeah, after right. seventeen, like not much changed for me. Like that was kind of it. Like <laughs> you bet you went through it all before seventeen. So. Like like the thought that goes through my mind sometimes. Like when I'm, when Sam and I are in our house, and like I'll be making noise. I'm like, oh no no, I have to be quiet. Or like, oh no, I can't like do this to the wall. I'm like, wait no, this is my house. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> I can do whatever Mom, I want. I get punished. <laughs> What, what, what is it? Oh, wait. So I've been through 30 and 40, right? I'm in, I'm in my 40s now. What Does it mean anything to you guys? Like, you like do you feel stressed about that day coming? Like, is it going by too fast? Like, does that, what, what's 30 mean to you? Not a lot. Yeah, no. very, very little. Um, I mean, like, I don't even know what day of the week it is. Like, I don't know what month yeah, it Matt is. Matt asked me what month it was today. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was I writing? I was like, you're writing the date on our open score. Yeah, I was writing on my open score sheet, and I was like, yo, what? What's the date today? And he's like, the 19th. I was like, 18th. But. Of? He's like, October. You I was did. like, oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. You did say when, we, when you walked in, you're like, it's surprising just how little I know about my day-to-day life as it comes. There were my- Halloween decorations on the rig. <laughs> that's true. Well, that, that's pretty normal for CrossFit Soul, though, by the way. But that's yeah, pretty that's normal fair, for that's CrossFit Soul. Well, so I, I remember like when Sam and I first started dating, like I, I never know what day of the week it is. So like, like there are times that I'll show up to the, gym like champlain valley at like noon on a sunday i'm like why are there no cars here and then i walk <laughs> up and the door's locked I'm like, why is the door locked like what's going on I'm like oh it's, it's sunday oh. and sammy used to always make fun of me for it and then she quit her Until job it became her problem and started working from home <laughs> and when every every day is the same same thing for her you, too yeah like you're yeah. not leaving the house you're right because it's monday school like, school is the only exactly. reason i knew what monday through friday was and then also having a job where you have to be in the office exactly and also monday to friday yeah that's true. true yeah that's i haven't it. had I mean, that I, I, I haven't mean, had that in four or five kid, years i have kids now so it's you know, yeah that keeps you a little easier schedule. easier true for me. yeah you got the, the reminder of your kids going to school every day monday to friday I mean, sometimes the weekends are worse with kids though i mean sports and oh true yeah you're coaching usually all day on a saturday or yep that's true but so it is indeed Friday, and that means we have a few more days until 20.2 scores are due. I know you referenced you did it earlier. When was the last time you guys did an open workout together before today? I don't think we ever have. Open really? Workout? Ever? An open no. workout? No. Yeah, never? Head to head? I don't think so. I don't think so. I couldn't, I couldn't, yeah, I don't think so. No. I think the last open workout I did against other males was Panchuk and uh, Cole. And that was and that 17. was like seventeen, yeah, yeah. seventeen point three or something like that. So. so then, let me ask you guys. You know, going head to head, you said it was nice, but when you guys typically do the workout around the open, do you guys tend to prefer to do it alone? Do you do it with somebody that's competitive? I know you did nineteen five with us, Matt. Um, yeah, I you think know, against Tia. But like, what what's your go to if you want to be in like the perfect mindset? Not to say that this wasn't a good environment for you to do it, but uh, I, I think a lot of it depends on what the workout is. You know, there's some where it doesn't matter what someone else is doing right. but like it's something like a 20 minute amrap where it's it's so easy like you can lose a full round just by taking an extra deep breath before every movement right so having someone like when i'd glance over and like basically pass just holding me accountable to like all right like don't waste a second every round because that adds up by the end of it right um so i i enjoy it um yeah, this I, kind I think, of workout was good for it. It helped you stay focused for sure. I, I think the bigger thing is just the company in the gym, the company while doing it. Like there's something about when you're working out next to someone else. If when you know you have company in misery, it's not as <laughs> terrible. Like I know yeah. stuff, stuff like long, like bike workouts or rowing intervals, something like that. Yeah. Like I've done them with Sammy next to me. Yeah. Like, she's not a competitor. She's not pushing my paces. 
but it's just having that company there next to you is something to like distract you from the pain. Which kind of, how about you first, Pat, as far as like a go-to environment for an open <clears throat> workout if not here with Matt in Miami? <laughs> I like, I've done an announcement kind of every year for the last four or five years and I, they're fun. Like they're fun and they're a different thing. And like, I think that having in those environments, it is fun. I think it's str- like a workout like the first open workout is one that you could do in that environment and probably not really suffer for it. Cause yeah. it was mostly just like hit the go switch. Um, ones like this, you need to be a little more careful with. And I just always kind of like, I, I do all my open workouts by myself pretty much. Really? It's like like with no one in the gym or yeah. you in the- and, not, and not because I prefer it that way necessarily, but just because it's sort of what you have at hand. Yeah. It's just sort of the way it was. Like when I was at school, I would be kind of, I'd always be coming in in the afternoon after my morning lectures and stuff. And then like I had a two hour window to do it. And that was usually, they have like a noon class that ended at one. And then whoever coached that class would judge me and we'd just film it and it'd be done and I'd knock it out and it was good. But I'd be by myself in there and it was fine. And like people will stay and be like, can we watch? And you're like, yeah, like, I don't, I don't like, I'm not right, worried you, about it, gotcha. but most of the time you don't it's kind of just like, no. And the, and the push from somebody Yeah, external. and it's like, I don't know. I, I probably do prefer to have it like lower key just because I think that, I think that there's, you need to be controlled in a lot of workouts to a certain degree, some to a lesser extent than others. But I think that when people make a mistake in an open workout, like a costly mistake, it's more often flying and dying and less often overpacing. I cannot agree more, especially so, with some of the things we saw in 20.1. I think that you're less <laughs> likely to do that if you're by yourself. Um, and I think that it's just, you know, like today was, there was a risk of that. I think, you know, when we both start and we're like, you're kind of eyeing each other and we know that we're probably both going to be reasonably fast. So I think it likely in the back of our heads, it's like, well, you know, like if we both, if you're, if I'm close to him, I'm probably good. And I think he's probably thinking similar <laughs> things for me. But at that point, like you said, we're keeping each other accountable. We're like, if you're ever thinking about taking a second and like he's moving, you're like, shit, I got to move. And so it like, it, it kept you focused and it gave you like something to focus on other than the time and the reps and like how many rounds you've done. And it was easy to get sunk in a workout like that. Cause there was just, there was so much. When, like when, when your judge is like, all right guys, you're four minutes in and you're like, Oh no. <laughs> in this one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like I'm, seven rounds in. And you're I like, heard that. You're call like, yeah, right. we must be, we must be going for a while now. And you look out and you're like, Oh, you were great. seven rounds in at four minutes. It was like, you know, I, something I, I forget like the specific that. numbers, but, but but I remember like as we were both entering, I think it was like the first like seven or eight rounds, we stayed basically rep for rep. Yeah. And then it was like as we were finishing one round going to the next and one of our judges like, all right, guys, like you're finishing round seven or round eight and you're at like 402. Yeah. I'm, I know the feeling I had of like, oh, crap, this isn't good. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, it was one of those where you look up and you're like, no way. Like we're we're in here for a long time. Like we're in it. Uh, so, which you know, I, I like Matt says. I think the misery loves company is a pretty good way, pretty accurate depiction of that. It is. You know, it's it's funny. I think us mere mortals, and, and not to go completely down this path, but I'd love to get your thoughts on it, especially in a workout Speak like that. Speak for yourself. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. No. Matt, by the way, Matt has trained quite a while with these two beasts to my right. That, it uh, makes you less fit. For, uh, <laughs> you become the lovable loser. That's it. No, dude, you've gotten really fit. You still, you still kill me in workouts, man. You've, you've gotten pretty fit training with these two. Uh, the, the I remember more, the last. I remember the last time O'Keefe challenged me in a workout. Oh god. Was, what was it? A one k row? Oh god. And who won? What? Not me. Uh, I know he's. Was, I, I, I like, remember like, O'Keefe, O'Keefe used to. I remember like he would talk shit of like, no, there's certain movements that like I'll get you in. I don't care how fit you get, I'll get you in. And like, keep in mind, this is like 2013, 2014. Like I'm still brand. Nobody new to needs the sport. to know what year it was, man. <laughs> <laughs> and still counts. I remember we we went the first trip we took together was to St. Thomas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And on the plane, he was like, "No, like you cannot beat me in wall balls." And I was like, "Yeah, I will." And so we literally got off the plane, took our suitcases to a CrossFit gym, and did Karen, no. just because like we were talking shit for butter. three hours on the airplane. Like, no, like you're not going to beat me. <laughs> we <laughs> we videotaped it. I finish the workout and walk out of the gym. Like I just drop the ball, walk out. O'Keefe stops and just stares at me as I'm walking away. Like, I'm like <laughs> what happened? Just, man? How many in were you? And I, I I was probably I probably had still like fifteen or twenty at okay, least okay, balls right. left. Yeah. And I mean like 
I gave myself rhabdo. Like I walked oh. peg legged for our entire trip in St. Thomas. Worth it. Like, yeah. And I was like, I, worth it. I mean, mind you going in my, my Karen time is like my best time. So I was like, I have like a 445 Karen. So I'm like, okay, this is the one I'll get. This him. is the one I'll get him. And, and then he like, he literally shamed me. The video is amazing. Like he, he gives me the, st- the strut stare as he walks out and like, he screwed my workout up. I dropped the ball and I like looked at it. I'm like, no, 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 you're not, you're not <laughs> done. <laughs> There's no it's way. Like, Who's counting his reps? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, amazing. And then the last one was a 1K row. He was like, nope, I'll, I'll always have you on the rower. And then the Dubai qualifier had a 1K row time trial. Oh, yeah. Ugh. And that was tough to watch. And so like I was at O'Keefe's home gym in Boston, CrossFit the Swamp. And like his name's up on the board at the top. for oh, like the top the, 1K. Yeah, like. The top five times, <laughs> in the top one k time. Gotta erase it. I know. I I told oh, I told I the head coach Patty. Just, just I told Patty. I was like, right "Yo, off. erase that name at the top." That's, That's not now. Mind you, he's qualifying for the, one of the biggest competitions in the world, and all he cared about was, "Can you please put my name up there?" I'm like, <laughs> no, no, no. He's not a member. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they wouldn't the do it because I wasn't a member. It says a lot about. <laughs> I just want his name off. I don't want my name on. I just want O'Keefe's off. I remember the last time Matt. Tried to do a workout against me. We were on the same team. <laughs> where, where, where was this? Where was this? <laughs> oh my oh, he god! He fell off the rower. <laughs> <laughs> fell, wait, wait, I didn't hear that story. It was Come a on. workout. I think he fell was, off the this rower. Was good it was like twenty over. calories at the end of a workout, and he was a was, couple I think calories it was thir- behind. Thirty maybe. It yeah. was a little more than twenty. It was O'Keefe, like a little longer. O'Keefe, O'Keefe was this, going full dummy and just popped right off the butt. rower. Oh. No, so here, here, here's the deal. Your it was feet like, strapped in. It was like one of these oh, things yeah. where uh, every it's twelve person team. So yeah. you went in pairs through a group of uh, movements, and the only group that really mattered in the workout was the last group. So he and I were partners in the last group, and it was like twenty synchro toe to bar, and then you had to like. Do something in between. No, I think it was, it was seven. It was groups of three. It was seventy-five synchro total bar. Oh right, right. With one, two people doing total bar, one person dead hanging on rings, and then I on de- the rower, I dead hung a lot. Yeah, on the rower. <laughs> Go to see Matt's confused because he only did twenty total bar. By the way, wait, let's talk about that before we started the workout. It was it, that's right. It was Jess Griffith, Pat, and I were the team of three, and I was like, Pat, here's the deal. I got twenty unbroken toes to bar in me. That's it. And sure enough, he's looking over to, as we're doing him on 18 and 19. He's like, oh, wow, you only <laughs> have 20. They're getting there. Frankly, They're reaching. Props for knowing his capacity very well because <laughs> I don't <laughs> think he go. could have done another rep. I was watching <laughs> his fingers come off, and I was getting very stressed. I'm like no. walking up with him, and I'm like, oh, no, he's going to – He's going to go down. We're going to have a highlight reel onto his head. But he did his 20 and he got off and then Jess came up and then Matt dead hung for the rest of it. And then once you finished that, you went to one person held the deadlift. So Jess held the deadlift and Matt and I rode. And it was like something like 35 calories or something. I don't know right. what it was on each rower. So Matt, the whole before this workout, it's like, I'm going to beat you on that row at the end. Like, <laughs> I'm just gonna like I mean, I had it. I, I was like, I have a chance to look good here. Yeah. Two pulls in. My my ass fell right off the seat of the rower. Strapped in. I was strapped in, and I'm like, I can't find the seat. I'm done. Uh, and sure enough, it, I mean, I yeah. wasn't even off the floor, and he's te- Matt's texting me because videos are getting sent to him. He's like, look at he falling off <laughs> the rower. Oh, yeah, I sent it to all the group chats I was in. Was like, was in. I'm like, yo, guys, yeah, look what Dad did. On, and he's like, here we go. And he just, like, started trying to go so hard. Lost his seat, and then his feet are still strapped in, right? So he's all tangled up, <laughs> dangling off of it. <laughs> Trying to find the paddle and find his seat with one hand. It was too funny. When dad tries to hang with his kids. Uh, my fit, so my fitness is taking it. So anyways, I walked track. it off. I yeah, walked it across then. the line. <laughs> it's all took downhill. the W. I was like, yeah. That was my retirement stage. That was strength and depth. <laughs> strength. That, was, that was like six months ago, seven? No, it was November. October of last oh, year. Oh, so it was one year. Wow, man. Yeah. Time freaking yeah. flies. That's crazy. Yeah, I yeah. remember that. I remember when you guys went out there. That was yeah. cool. That's a really cool team format. I like the teams of 12. It's yeah, different. Yeah, it was fun. It's That's unique. Um, no, so where I was going with that, actually, back to the, the 20.2 conversation. And again, I just am curious because, as I had said, I'll speak for myself, mere mortal myself. Um, when it comes to, like, self-talk during a workout like that, you, you reference quite a number of times, like, saying to yourself, oh, crap, I'm only four minutes in, seven rounds in. Do you guys have that dialogue in your own head? And, like, what what does that sound like? What does <laughs> well, that look like? I don't know if we can... I, for I myself, have, I, I don't know if I can repeat my dialogue. negative self talk. <laughs> we were just yeah? talking about this just oh, today. Just oh, I missed out on that conversation. Talk I'm, to me. Oh, I'm kind of like, get up on that bar, pussy. Let's go. Oh, I'm, <laughs> the, I'm the worst. I just like fully like the workouts like this too that are kind of for say elite level athletes that 
you're trying to keep your splits at a certain time, but you can't really step past a certain point. Right. Or it's just like it's not going to work. So it kind of gets boring for a little bit, and there's a lot of time to think. So you just kind of get lost in your own head, and you're like, <laughs> I'm just like, oh, like this sucks. Like this is stupid. <laughs> and then I get like, it was, I remember doing the burpees last week and just being like, on my like sixth or seventh round, and being like, you could stop. You should just stop. Same thing with me. Oh my so god, like, you know, I really can relate. That's it. what I wanted to hear from you. I, I wanted like, to be yeah. able to relate. I remember like, so when I did the workout, I, I don't know what I was thinking when I went into it. Um, you know, I just, I was like, oh, it's 95 pound snatches. It's only eight reps of snatches and then 10 burpees. You can put the hammer down. Let's go. It's a mind. And then I F. finished the first five rounds at 347. Ugh. And I remember like taking a peek at the clock. And it was the first time looking at the clock. And I looked, saw the clock <laughs> and I'm doing the math in my head and went, oh, <laughs> I made I made a huge mistake because oh, I was on man. pace for like a seven thirty four finish time and I was like, uh oh. What did your time end up being? What did you end up finishing it out? You were twenty something. Call? Eight twenty something. Yeah, eight eight uh twenty eight. Did you repeat after that one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was purely just like coward. <laughs> well, for repeating? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Did you repeat last week, Pat? No. No. One and done. No, I mean most. If you have to, you just do. Like, it's, so I know, you're, yeah, I know you're, it's you're a professional. It's, it's your now. job. <laughs> like, it's well, especially now. now, like with the 2019 and 2020 open. Yeah, exactly. I feel like it's more acceptable to repeat because you get your ticket straight away. Yeah. No so, point. but before, like for the last like four years, it's just been it's just make it just hit it, hit it once, and then my my goal was always I wanted to be in the top five. Of my region, so I was in the top ten top of my super region. So yeah. you're in the final heat of the first event. Yeah. Um, and so, f- I mean, for four or five years, the only time I would repeat a workout was when I would watch the tape and realize like I missed a rep, or like missed or like miscounted. If you won the workout, you'd have to display. No, not, it not even not even that. It's just like at the end, you know. Like I remember there was one, it was Yeah, like they asked for video submissions yeah, still, yeah, right? It, it was it was a super, super like seventy five pound snatch and bar muscle ups, okay. ten rounds or something. And I realized I I did nine snatches in instead of ten. Who was your judge? So my judge was actually yelling at me. To do another like, one and you just disregarded. And, well, so I'm deaf out of one side. And so I couldn't hear her. And then so I just kept going, and then she just saw how confidently I went to the bar. So she was like, oh, he must. She must have miscounted. She thought she miscounted. So I, I watched the tape and was like, oh, I did nine snatches instead of ten. So I just went back in the next day and repeated it. And I, I mean, I got, like, the same score. but It was someone you knew, though, right? The yeah, yeah. Was judging you Because I can imagine a stranger, you disregard them at the yeah. end, having to tell you that you missed a rep. I can imagine the fittest man on earth. They Not would be back like, then. That was 2015. <laughs> Here we no, go. Okay. Uh, True. Oh yeah, man. We've come a But yeah, long so way. so anyways, when it was like, all right, the goal basically winning trying to win the game or trying to win the open was just ego. There's no prize money in it. It doesn't benefit you in any way going right. in. So it's just like if you're repeating workouts, it's like either because you're worried about qualifying for regionals or it's ego. Um so back then it was like I only repeated when I made a mistake and then but now I still try to do one and done. But it's like if I'm hearing scores rolling in and it's just I know I'm way down like I did something wrong of like approach the workout incorrectly. I'm like, OK, I need to go back and redo this. But now, is any part of it getting beat by Pat and I'm being transparent here? I know you guys are good friends. I definitely want to dive into your relationship <laughs> and the dynamic between the two of you because I find it very intriguing. I know you guys went head to head for years at regionals and then at the games. And you just mentioned this is the first time going head to head on an open workout. Was your self talk any? This is like we're breaking new ground. <laughs> this, is, this is exciting. And your friendship and your competing uh, competitor career. Uh, but let me ask: um, Was there any bit of knowing that Pat was passing you? Did that? What was your self talk like then? Were Were you bummed that you were losing to Pat on this workout? Oh, obviously. And you're gonna repeat yeah. at this point, I assume. Uh, I probably won't. Really? Okay. I probably won't redo this one. Um, he just knows I'm superior. Oh. <laughs> no, there's shots fired. The, like. I'm fully aware going into workout of another competitor's strengths or weaknesses. And, you know, like on the week one workout, some of the names up at the top, yeah, they smoked me. But in the grand scheme of things, like, right. I'm like, I don't care about you coming to the games because they're not going to be. I'm like, you. yeah, you had, you. you had one good workout, whether like you're just amazing at burpees or you're really good at cycling those snatches. You know, there's certain people that you see beating you. And after enough time in the sport, 
you know what to look for. There's there's open heroes that post up crazy scores and then just can't perform when they're on on a stage in front of people. Um, but with this one going against Pat, I think a the the big thing that stood out to me is like all right, Pat's been training hard for a while now. I remember we talked probably a month and a half ago, and we were talking about like he was like, oh you know I did this work on this work and I was like. Your work, your training right now? Yeah, I know. And we talked about it and I was like, yeah. And they like uh, our first, we I had just gotten back to training and it went straight back to like full on, full on. on. And Did I you was have any like, time off? Like, yeah, a little bit. But I and I went and, you know, I traveled and went to a wedding and did a couple things. But like, once we went back to training, it wasn't like the post games ease back into it. Like, yeah, you know, I'll do a group class and slowly, you know, get my feet wet again. It was right away. I was like, "Man, Michelle is trying to kick the shit out of me." Like, <laughs> like I, I remember he. I remember he told me one of the workouts he did, and I was like, "You're shitting me! You did that?" Yeah, and I'm like, "Right early and, on." <laughs> and we're like, yeah. and, and I'm I'm sitting there thinking, like, I'm not even going to set foot in a gym for another month. So and, how how did your breaks compare? You you took off for let's say two weeks to a month. How long post games? I probably started training like consistently again um, in September. Like I bet you, early September I was so like a mo- doing about a like, month. Okay, doing like pretty good training, um, and then you know, and I t- I also like I went on some little holidays in like September here and there, like had some weekends away or little bits of time. But even there, I'm still, still trying training. to get my sessions in when I can. Like, whereas you know, Matt was working on his bar. So most I literally of the week, like the that's my summer, question. Right? Yeah, Matt. two two One weeks month? ago, how much time off? Yeah, roughly. My first time back in the gym was two weeks ago. And we're all the way in the beginning of, of October, mid October. So you started like yeah. October, end of September. Yeah. So, like, yeah. so you took like an extra two, month. Two so, months, so I yeah. did. I did one week of like just showing up to the gym for an hour and yeah. being like, you can do anything. Like, just bench press and curls and get out. Like, but just go to the Move gym a little bit. Yeah. And then it was last week we went back to Tennessee and we overlapped with Shane and Tia for a week. And even that was like training once a day but it's probably like two hours and you know it's t and i going head to head so like we did some interval stuff and like some breathing heavy but like the first open workout was the first workout i hit that was what? like the, going hard wow so a full month additional off how do you feel now having taken that extra time off would you have started back a little bit sooner if you had done it again. I mean, um, at the end of the day, I don't think it's going to change much I think, overall. I think right now I'm probably wishing I got back into it like a week sooner or something. Okay. Um, but, you know, we were kind of in a tough position. You know, I was trying to get my barn renovations done before moving back to Tennessee so that we could, like, put all our stuff in the barn before we moved. Mm. Um, my parents' house in Vermont where we've stayed for the summers um, – they sold their house, so we had to completely move out. The famous barn. Whereas, mm-hmm. whereas every every year when we go back to Tennessee, it's like we just pack a suitcase and we leave a fully furnished apartment, my whole gym, everything where it is. But this year we had to empty. Ev- we had a parents sold the house. That's so your we had childhood to move. home, no? Is that yeah, your- yeah, yeah. Man, so, we live such uh, parallel lives. My dude, my family just too. sold their my childhood home yeah. to do this summer. Yeah, a lot of growing was, up to do as you guys near. You know, it's funny. Like three zero. Oh, yeah, well, you know, we're put, we're pushing thirty. So, <laughs> like, I've, I've owned my own house for three years, and I just moved out of my parents' house. <laughs> yeah, right. It's just like you have spare stuff. You're just like, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, we'll just leave it there. And they're like, when are you gonna deal with this? All this. Junk? I was, I was just trying to like, I'm living that like, I have a winter home and a summer home. Except yeah, my yeah. summer home is just my parents' house. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was asking. I got about great this. roommates. You, yeah. <laughs> You just went through this too. I didn't realize your parents sold the, the house. I, that's all. I mean, I remember when my parents sold my childhood home. That was like a moment I don't think I was ready for. Like, wow, all uh, the stuff I, that goes on there, you know? So, like, the fact that it was my childhood home didn't care about. Um, like, you know, that, because that's where I grew up, I had no connection to it. Like, my growing up, my dad, my dad never called it home. He always called Ontario home. And so, like, anytime. That's in Canada, just so everybody knows. <laughs> So anytime we had a free weekend, like we would get in the truck, go back up to camp up in Ontario. And, and my dad always referred to like, Hey, you got a long weekend. You want to go home? I'm like, yeah, let's go home. And like, so I never had a connection to the house in that way. But then, so the house is split into two. Like it's a, like there's a full apartment in the basement and, but it's not a hundred percent separated. So they didn't want to rent it out to like a stranger because you still share the same entrance right. and all that. So anyway, so I moved in there. And 
like it was just convenient. I was a full-time student. And then right after college, I was traveling so much with CrossFit. It was like, why would I bother getting my own place? This is too convenient. But then that was where I lived when I met Sammy. That's mm. where Sammy and I first lived together. Um, you know, that's where I trained majority of the time when I won my first games, my second games, you know, up, up until recently, right. uh, up until this year, that's where I trained. You know, I had my basement gym. That was like my dungeon where like the work got put in. So that was the attachment I had to it. Um, like being a, being a kid and running around was never a thing. Right. Um, so yeah, you know, it was hard packing up the gym and, you know, I'm just bottling up the emotions and like shoving them down. Boy. I remember, I remember I told Sammy, like, <laughs> as, as we're, as we're leaving, we're getting in the truck to leave. Like, and I'm never coming back to this house. I've lived here for 25 years, never coming back. And like, you know, my parents are crying and like, everyone's getting emotional. And I'm like, nope, let's get in the truck. Go. Don't like, even think about it. Like, we're not thinking about, it. we're not thinking about it. And then as we're like pulling out of the neighborhood, Sammy was like, like, how you doing, sweetheart? You okay? And I was like, yep, I'm good. I just wonder um, who I'm going to take this out on later. Right? <laughs> bottle this up, yeah, so that, bottle that, it up, and that let pops it off later. Uh, <laughs> at some inappropriate time, you berate some stranger. Uh, did, yeah. did you have a similar reaction to your moving? I haven't lived at home for like ten years, oh, so okay. it was like he, I, I wasn't adult. home when they moved away. I wasn't like no emotional. Attachment. Yeah, no, I I was like not around. And, I mean, it. it I would have been nice to probably be there and unpack a little bit, but I don't know. We, my parents came to visit my new place just like a couple weeks ago. You just moved there too, like a month, two months. Just ago? after, uh, just before. Well, so I moved there before the games, end of June. But then I, I went to July, or I went to Montreal for all of July. Mm. So I wasn't around there. Michelle started work. My so my partner Michelle started work there as a doctor on like July second. So, but I went to go live with my coach Michelle for all of July okay. before the games. And then, yeah, I basically came back and started living there in August. So I've been there since, basically. The, is that is so that basically what, you guys moved in and then you bailed and let her unpack oh, all the boxes? I was there for like a week to unpack. <laughs> I know, but there was definitely like, hey, things left uh, undone. I expect this place to be home when I get back. All right, so <laughs> yeah. but this is there. Like, what? I we fully we set up the guest bedroom and <laughs> didn't set great. up our room because we didn't have like a bed frame and things. So when I got back there, like we still didn't have any of that stuff. Michelle had just lived in the guest room. The, the apartment we moved out of still didn't have a bed frame. We yeah, lived there so for we six just, years. Like, so still doesn't. What's wrong with that? I still do that too. Nah, it's just, it's you know, we're like trying to make adult steps here. So, so anyway, we eventually don't let people peer pressure you into what being like an unquote <laughs> adult is. You Thanks, live your man. life. <laughs> live my truth. So she's your partner. <laughs> like, is that what the kids call him today? Is it's girlfriend or like, where is <laughs> yeah. this going? Significant other. Yeah. I feel like, so it feels kind of childish to say like, she's my girlfriend. Like we've been together for like five and a half years and like we're, we're very serious and committed to each other. So it just feels juvenile and weird. And that's just a Canadian thing too. I think that a lot of a lot of couples don't get married anymore. Uh, there's a lot of common law marriage and things like that. And that's what like you wouldn't say your wife because you just say your like your spouse or your your partner. Mm -hmm. So I think that it's also right. it's like you know it's gender neutral. It's very progressive. <laughs> I, I call Sam, think about it. I call Sammy my wife because I hate the word fiance. Yeah, and it's like we're going to be engaged for a long time. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, I'm just gets I, rid of the questions. I, I don't. Oh, when wanna, you getting married? Exactly. Like, I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah, my wife Sammy. You know, how long have you and your wife been together? <laughs> 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 I'm gonna start calling you guys that too. Then, I uh, we met uh, at the 2015 games. Okay, yeah. 20. Okay, five years, and you've been with your. You guys live such parallel lives. I know, this isn't is this freaky? so interesting. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, we got some good ladies. You do that. With that said, going more to your guys' dynamic and relationship, would you guys, I mean, is it safe to say you guys are friends, friends, frenemies, competitors? I would say we're friends. Yeah? I don't I mean, know what he, fuck, he fucking chirps me a lot. He does. Hey, if you can't, already if you can't pocket, give your friends a hard time, who can you give a hard time true. to? That's true. <laughs> this is the thing. That's what friends are for. <laughs> That's how I grew up. <laughs> It's true. You it's guys, true. You, you have to like take, every once in a while, I have to be like, "Yo, we're friends, right?" Like you talk a <laughs> lot of shit. I just want to make sure, that, like, like yes, there's some meaning behind it, but I hope you're not like hiding your resentment behind these jokes. <laughs> I wonder. Whoa, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's so much pet? hidden animosity. <laughs> Social media influencers get trolled a lot. You got to get it out, right? You well, know, so, so like, yeah, there's, there's a difference here when Pat. Like chirps me on social media. Everyone jumps on the bandwagon. They're like, "Woohoo, yeah!" <laughs> they love it. Do you get back? Do you and, get then, back? and then, and then, if can't. I say, if I say anything back to him, they're like, 
conduct yourself like a fucking winner. <laughs> like a champion. You're fucking beating on the people there. Like, dude, I get Hey, there's one the good thing about being the loser, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> and it's that everybody sympathy. rallies behind you. <laughs> oh, my. Yeah, I get no. Yeah, like, stick it to the man. Like, I'll. I'll I, I don't think I've even commented on one of your things in years because, like, it's just people take it as, <laughs> like, oh, street. my God, you are being <laughs> such a sore, sore winner. Like, you are such a poor sport. And I'm like, dude, we're friends. Like, I'm joking. <laughs> Come God. on. Yeah, nobody knows. That's the problem, right? You can't. That's why. So now we have to just do it by texting each other. Yeah. So nobody sees it behind the curtain. <laughs> Except sometimes. I'll still throw them on social media. <laughs> yeah. So friends here very clearly so. And then on social, maybe some jabs here and there. But question for you guys as it pertains to like truly an utter competition so i know you guys don't compete against each other very often except for virtually games, just at the yeah. games right When's well the- then we competed at rogue oh yeah. true, true, true. And we'll see like this year i'm not sure what what matt's plan is but like well, I mean, nowadays there's pat's, a chance that we'll you know we'll run into pat's each other hitting a few times. every sanctional with everyone every all 28 one. yeah what it's is, a long what season is, well, any single one with prize money pat's showing up <laughs> they'll have something might be a, a million rubies but there'll be yeah. something there <laughs> Um, I love Ruby. <laughs> no, I bring that up I'm because your 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 dynamic now. You guys are you know hanging out, throwing jokes at each other. Does that change at all when you guys are like in the tunnel in the Coliseum? Does like, I, I'm really interested to see how your dynamic changes once you kick into competition mode. Obviously, this is the open, so and so I think I think like the dynamic doesn't really change like directly to towards Pat. It's like you know when when we're in the warm up area, it's like yeah, we might be talking and some jokes but it's like when you're lined up in the corrals or like going out onto the coliseum floor no one's joking with anyone like it's everyone's got their game face right. on they're they're ready to go um but i think like even stuff like regionals i think we were kind of bantering a bit when we did go against each other yeah um, and i think that there's a certain amount of you know it, I think it's, you just kind of get to know what people's limits are, and I, I, like some people don't like to talk a lot at the games in general or in competition. They like, they shelter themselves away, and that's what they need to be focused. And I think you have to respect that a little bit. So you, as you get to know people, it's just like yeah, like if we're in the you know the, in the back and like the locker room area, like that's time to chat and you know shoot the shit, and it's all good. But like yeah, now you're in warm up area. It's like okay, a little we more give each other a little yeah. more space. And like you know, if you have a crack here and there, are you like you're sharing a bar and you chat a little bit, fine. But it's getting to be business time. And then you know, like Matt says, you're in the corrals, and you know it's you're you're getting your instructions for walkouts and stuff. Like all right, like it's now it's kind of like time to be a professional, and and everyone's there to do a job, and like. The reality of it is, I'm not there to get in the way of Matt doing his job. He's not getting in the way of, my, of me, right? Like, the I think it's the same with a lot of people we compete with who I consider to be friends. It's like I don't look like I don't want them to do poorly. I just right. want myself to do a little better, <laughs> right? Like I don't wish poorly for him, and he doesn't. The same for me. But it's just like at the end of the day, we both want to win, and we both can't win, right? So it's like that's that's the relationship. Is it's like yeah, up until that point, like yeah, it's friendly. But like when we're on the competition floor, like. I'm trying to win, and so is he. And it's just like we're gonna do whatever we can try to do to make that happen. But at the after that's done, like you don't need to carry that off on the off the floor with you because like I've had other competitors that did that to me, and like during the competition they were just being a total dick and like very cold and distant and and I was kind of like I was getting like, oh, warm man. up behind the scenes. I was like, oh man, I thought like. We were friends. No, like the whole day before the competition. Want to call him out right now? No, on the no, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> we don't have to that. go there. And then the like, competition ended, and they literally said to me, "Like, oh, okay, we can be friends again now." And I was like, so "What?" That's kind of weird. So I was that, like, "That's what I was wondering about the two." Like, yeah, and that's and I, what that was. Like, you were like because we we're about be to friends. compete against each other. Like, <laughs> yeah, and I get. Want, like, you don't need to be. And, yeah, we're not some people might dicks, just need to disconnect yeah. like that, and I don't know. I think it's a certain amount of respect for like what people's process is and whatever. I like. Just because that's not the way that I do it or Matt does it doesn't mean that that's... But I think it's it's funny. Like, I don't know. I've played a lot of sports and, like, I've played against friends and I've, like, played with friends. And, you know, it. you just, like, that's the way sports are. Like, you have to be able to banter. And I think if, if you take it super seriously, it's not going to be fun and it's not super sustainable. And it kind of, like, takes away from it a little bit, in my opinion. And it also relaxes me a little bit. Like I get super stressed, and the part of the way I combat that <laughs> is by like trying to provide a bit of levity and being like, oh, you know, crack a joke here and there, and it's great. Speaking of banter, oh, nice. Yeah, like that, that seemed like a, a night after competition. Was that a was that a color run? I think that's uh, no, that's in uh, Thailand. That's in Copenhagen. God, God, What's with the paint? After a full moon party. 
This, you can thank O'Keefe for that, by the way. That was clearly all, Matt. I'm doing some That's Google true. searches <laughs> He's doing over some here. searching, you, trying to dig up dirt. We're trying to throw some shade. Just go to Uncle Mitchie's Instagram page. It might be 2000. I was like, scroll back a couple years. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so a lot of people know about Vellner's brother. And anytime I bring those, they're like, oh, yeah, the Cirque du Soleil performance. I'm like, no, no, no. The other. I brother. met him. I met him and this the, year. And they're like, wait, there's a third? And I'm like, oh, yes. Oh. Oh, Uncle Mitch is, Uncle Mitch has built himself a brand. Yeah, he's, he's got. He, a, he's you got scroll, you scroll back about like a year and a half, two years. There's there's some very tasteful nudes of Patrick. It's no, fun. he pulls those out. That's that's. Oh, I've got, yeah, awesome. I made a whole calendar. That was. Uh, <laughs> I think I might have made two. My, actually. There, there's my <laughs> favorite is the jumping off your porch, fully nude with boots on, battling a broomstick. <laughs> But can you explain? That's a great this, October photo. Can you explain this moment, though? I mean, well, this is not that far. This is not long ago. I mean, you've tried. I, I mean, I mean, it's you 10 years like, ago. This is pre CrossFit for sure. When yeah, you, this is like ago? 10 years ago. 10 years ago. Wow. Yeah. This is like 2009, I think. And what's with the, what's the paint? What's that? It was a full moon party. It's all like glow stuff. This oh, is just the morning okay, okay. after a full moon party. Come a long way. So I mean, it's his that, parents' fault. They let him go That's to Thailand off, as an 18 year old unsupervised. Like, you're going to come down there. Oh, yeah. Big time. Big time. I yeah, mean, I might have been, I might have been twenty, but I'm not sure because I think my brother was had uh, he was like seventeen or eighteen. Mitch had to be a part of that. Oh, okay, yeah, he was there, uh, and that's when you guys traveled the world. Yeah, yeah, we did like a four month backpacking trip uh, with wow. Mitchy. Yeah, just me and Mitch. Oh, that just sounds dangerous. Yeah, oh, yeah. eighteen was, and twenty years old. He almost got left a couple times. <laughs> I can mean? imagine. Wow. Mitch is just like a wrecking ball a little bit, and I mean, we both were at that. So time, I mean, so I can tell. Yeah, so like. Sure. Just like context, like my favorite Uncle Mitchie story I've ever heard was, I think it was your first year at the games and you got second or third? Third. 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 And so then they go to the after party and like getting after it. And Mitchie wanted a Vellner jersey to wear. And so he, oh yeah. Pat, Pat gives him a Vellner jersey and he wears it to the party. And then like they're getting ready to leave and they're like, they're like, where's Mitchie? We got to find Mitchie. And so they go find <laughs> Mitchie and he has like, like a couple beers in his hands and no shirt on. And they're like, Mitchie, what are you doing? What, where's your shirt? And he goes, may have sold it for some beer money. <laughs> <laughs> I, that can't be real. I'm, I'm pretty sure he called it greenbacks. Yeah. yeah I may have sold it for some greenbacks. Oh, there, uh, there was a moment, I'll tell you, on the epic. street in Madison. This was actually the second I was there. He walked up and he was like, we're like, where is the white Vellner shirt with the numbers? And he's like, I sold it for some greenbacks. <laughs> Are you kidding like, me? What? Dead, oh, dead serious, by the way. <laughs> I, Pat told me was before. It, was it 2018? He tried to fight me in the locker room? No. Yeah, after, yeah. after the award ceremony? And I think he, I think he, Why? I think he kissed Brent. Too. Yeah, yeah. Why did he kiss, try to fight kiss, Matt? Can kiss we... Brent on the lip, and then like he saw me <laughs> in the I don't even know how he got room. back there. Like, <laughs> and, and, and they're so strict. And he's like, he's like, all right, Fraser, let's go. Let's throw down. I told him, I was like, I can only kick one Vellner's ass in a day. Oh, I had to chirp him back. Punch right then and there. Mitchie's a big boy. Oh, I'm not trying to tussle. With that. He is a no big way. lad. I mean, Mitch fights in lacrosse. Oh like my legit. god, that lacrosse How old video. Is he? He's three years younger than me, so oh, he'd okay. be what am I? Twenty nine. He's quick math. Twenty six. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I mean, this could be the way your relationship could go. I mean, the guy Mitch fought in the lacrosse game. Yeah. is his best friend. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that Shit. was hilarious. That was Mother's Day too. Yeah. It was the the both of their was... moms were there watching, and my Mitchie mom and his mom tunes so, up this poor so they kid. Were like, and then he posted it on social media or something, being like, this is what I got my mom for Mother's Day. <laughs> oh, like him like and his best friend fighting. Like an all-out brawl. No like, way. Holy, yeah, he like, got quite the upbringing. Yeah, and looked like his friend wasn't on. totally into it. And Mitchie comes up and takes no, off his helmet. They were both drops super his hungover. They were like, and so Mitch knew that because his, his, he was out with his buddy that night before. And he's like, yeah, I know he's feeling like a sack of shit right now. <laughs> And there was like they had, they had apparently like made some sort of bet or agreement the night before that he's like yeah we'll we'll fight tomorrow at the game no big deal they play for different teams so they're like yeah 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 they agreed to signed it. with a different team yeah. and she was pissed yeah so then he's like there's like a minute left in the game or no there's like six minutes left in the game so if you get booted five with uh, less than five minutes left you have a suspension for the following game oh. so they're like if we're gonna do this we gotta do it now this so was staged there was a whistle cause some like went off a goalie and out or something and then they just got into it cause he's like Mitch is just like we gotta do this now and he's like what and then just like so grabs his helmet and like, like rips it off <laughs> Oh, it's and then too, just proceeded to tune Kick up this poor hungover kid. Are you yeah. kidding me? It was, it was amazing. Did you get any of that? Any of the, those genes over there, Pat? Not a lot. I no. have, my scrapping days are long gone. Yeah, I, I, I got into a, I got into a couple 
Tilly's here in my day, but Tilly's. Tilly, Tilly. Tilly. I've never heard yes. that word before. That's very Canadian. <laughs> not, not for quite some time. Tilly's for a toonie. <laughs> Tilly's for a toonie. You know, we actually, going back to kind of your two, the both of your relationship. Well, you mentioned you guys being relatively close friends. Would you guys consider each other best CrossFit friends? Like of all the competitors that you guys interact with? Who are you guys closest with? Any other names I mean, of people you're I, I you're think Belner's pretty tight with like a lot of like the whole like trash talk crew. Like, yeah, like we I, don't keep in touch much through no? the like we'll shoot each other notes every once in a while, but it's more just like when we're together. Yeah, like you guys we'll, like, we'll hang out, have a good time. But I mean, like you're pretty close yeah. with the I mean, even and, them, I don't talk to people mostly throughout the year. It's it's sort of uh my CrossFit world's kind of separate. But I would say I, I would know you better than most other people. Mostly Just because we've regionals. competed together yeah. more. Like I've like known you for a little longer. North, yeah. But I know like like when we had talked before, like like when we got a couple hours in between regional events and you're kind of like you're shooting the shit more of like, oh, you know, where'd you grow up? What do you like and we had so many similarities of like both our families have like lake houses or like camps on, on the water and like I know every year after the games I go up to my my camp and it's just like a week of sitting on the dock and, and he's like, Oh yeah, you know, my family has a camp here and and after a while of talking, we're like, Yo, I can't wait until after CrossFit and we can hang out. Like, <laughs> no. you know, like right now, like it's cool when we get to overlap and we throw down a little bit, but it's like, you know, he's doing his training and doesn't like, we, we don't want to show each other our off season stuff of what we're doing. We don't want to show our hands too much. So it's like, oh man, this relationship is going to be a lot of fun after CrossFit when, when we can just like hang out for like a week at a time. So, so you guys wouldn't train with each other? Like, I know I've heard you say that a number of times, Matt, that you tend to prefer to stay away from training with your competitors. Is that something that you share as well, Pat? Or, like, are you against that? I know you train with some guys up there. Like, I would do it in small doses. Yeah, I think exactly. it's, like, a couple days here or there, it's fine. Like no more than that. Yeah. And, and I think before, too, it's, like, I think as soon as someone becomes, like, a real competitor, I'm, like, yeah, we're we're not doing this. Like, like in the <laughs> off, se- off. in the off season good. or like an open workout or something like that. Like, yeah, well, like I still enjoy spending time with you, but it's like, no. all right, now it's time to go to work. work. Like, yeah. I'll send my and- spies. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that the realistically, the, the one thing that's nice, what Matt talked about earlier, is like company is great. And so, like, I went out and trained with Brent a few weeks ago, and we didn't do any of the same things. It was just like we did our own stuff, but we just sort of hung out in the gym and chatted, and it was fun. It is tough when you're if you're trying to train with your competition, who are your direct competition, like in your your division. Yeah, it's tough because I think you can't help but compete. And then if all you're doing is competing every day, day. if I'm competing with Matt every day, it's like the CrossFit Games every day of your life until you die. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. And then it's just like that. Well, I remember a couple, to get better. I remember a couple of years, the first year I moved into the central regional and it was like all the regional workouts got released. And so we're not competing at regionals together yeah. anymore or we're not competing against each other anymore. Um, and all the workouts got released. And so, you know, everyone's basically gone through and tried them all. And I, we were kind of chatting back and forth like, oh, how was workout six? You know, like, oh, you know, it was rough. But neither of us were saying anything concrete of like, Oh, I held this pace on the bike. I did this rep scheme. This was my time. And then Pat was finally like, Hey man, we're not competitors right now. We can just like share all our information. And I was like, Oh yeah, that'd be great. And (laughs) then, so like we just shared all of our numbers. Um, yeah, but I understand, I understand Pat's reason, right? Like you don't want to only go to that one place when you're going head to head in the gym training with each other. But isn't there like a semblance of like you, if you know what Pat does, is, is that really going to affect anything for you day to day? And then vice versa, like you knowing what Matt does in the gym on a day to day basis, is that going to affect anything about how you proceed with your own training? Like, I understand the sentiment. I just I, don't, I think it would. I you think do, it would. yeah. You yeah. you would be affected if you knew Pat was doing so like something. I, I've and had a, that. I've had stuff before where like I went in the gym and I knew I had a specific weakness, and I was like, okay, I need to throttle back the intensity on this so I can focus on the technique of it, how to mm. move properly, all this stuff, and then the person that was right next to me, it was their strongest movement. Right. And we would go in and start training and I'm like, okay, don't pay attention to what they're doing. You focus on what you need to focus on. And and then like the competitive edge kicks in and you're like, no, I'm putting the throttle down, I'm trying to keep up, do this, that. But then the whole thing I was striving for in that training session just got yeah, thrown out the window. Right, right, right. And Good so I point. literally stopped showing up when they were there and I was trying to work on that movement um, so that 
I was okay with like, I'm not losing, you know, I don't feel like I'm losing. By exactly. Them I'm not being tempted doing. to go faster. And throw yeah. My and that's what I mean about like, if you're, away. if we're there and we're doing different things, great. Like I don't, it's sweet. You just chat between sets yeah. and do things yeah. and let you get on with your day and it's fine. I think it, you can easily get sucked in, uh, to doing stuff like that and losing the purposefulness of your training. But it's, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's like kind of different. And I think that's why relationships like Matt and Tia work really well. Cause like you're not direct competition. Correct. Um, and for, on one hand, you know, knowing things that Matt's doing like may or may not affect me. Cause I could look at it and be like, okay, great. Like, like if Matt's working on his deadlift, you know, two, three days of the week, I'm not doing that. And like, if I'm pressing two, three days of the week, Matt's not going to do that. So like, there are certain things where you're like, yeah, this is clearly a delineation of like, this is what I need to work on. This is what you need to work Those on. Are different athletes. And yeah. like, whew, like, yeah, we're very, very different. So it's just, it, yeah. If you can be aware enough to control that stuff, it's awesome, but it can be, you can easily get sucked in. Like Matt said, we're competitors and like, it's so easy to get sucked in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, and skill work then becomes like, you know, moderate to a- anaerobic yeah. work. And you're, you're like, right. hey, shit, like, trying to compete with I each totally other. lost my. Yeah, why am I, why am I sweating during my accessory work? Yeah. Now? So <laughs> you guys do a ton of that. You, you were trained with our a member of our team yesterday, Daniel. He yep. said that you quite in, put in quite a bit of volume. He, did, he was telling me. And he's sitting there behind was the he camera. Complaining about all the he was not complaining, but he was sore, and he was he didn't do twenty point two with me last night because of it. But I would have oh. like an eight minute. No, 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 no. I don't mean to throw poor little Daniel under the bus. Little Daniel. Was it down to Q or Z on the alphabet? <laughs> no, I think it was only like it was like five or six things. I think. Decent. I think we did a couple of things he doesn't do regularly though, so I think that's what hit him. What it was, was it? Like we were, we did one like assault runner and like oh, okay, sandbag runner. squat and carry. And I think that it, he said he's pretty quad dominant, so I think his hammies took a bit of a kicking doing that. Oh, wow. So <laughs> that Daniel, was like... Daniel was fit. Daniel yeah, is pretty yeah, fit. fit. We train in the mornings together, and he tends to take We me. did like a lot of pulling. I don't know. Everything you get, like, where, you know, all these things you're talking about, like, specifically with training, like, do you guys like what you do? Like... Some days. Yeah, I mean, enjoy, yeah. Enjoy. Do you enjoy the, the work? The, the What don't you... What do you like about the process? What don't you? I mean, you guys choose a lot of pain for a living. <laughs> Oh man, that's a good question. I don't want to talk myself out of doing CrossFit <laughs> right now, which is we're, maybe we're what might happen if I really unpack this. So, um, I you know the, the thing about it is this is like sports. Like some stuff is sexy and fun to do, and it's great. And things are great. Are when things are good, they're great. You know, like it's fun when you compete and things go well, and and you know the pieces fit together well, and. And everything's just and like, like your body's feeling good. Yeah, you know? it's awesome. But there's a lot of bad days. And I think what separates, you know, people who are really, really good at their craft is the willingness to show up and, and tolerate the really bad days and say, OK, you know, like, what do I do with this now? Like, do I change this or that? And how do I make this bad day and and make it useful? Um, and it's just, yeah, it, it's re- it's repetitive. There's a lot of things in it that are, that are people don't typically have the patience or tolerance for mm. yep. like, you know, yeah, it's, it's painful and it's repetitive and there's things that aren't sexy or sweet about it, but it's, it's payoff, right? Like it's investment and payoff. And I think that that's kind of what we do it for. Yeah. I know, I know for myself, like the reason I do this and I chose it as my career path is because it's something that I enjoy. Um, you know, if it weren't a full-time job, yes, I would still be doing CrossFit, but it would be for one hour maybe two hours a day, not like in the gym, you know, my life wouldn't revolve around it. I won't be spending that much time in the gym. And then, you know, most days, most of the time, I'm like excited to get in the gym, you know, hang out with my friends in the gym, do training, everything. But then there's those days where, you know, it's just seems like nothing's going right. You know, your body's aching, you're tired. Maybe you have like a nagging injury, whatever it is. And those days are very few and far between that I have to tell myself like, all right, even though you don't want to, this is your job. This is your livelihood. Like if you want what you have, you need to put up with these days. Um, it's part of the process. Yeah. It's part of the process. And like like winners aren't built on a, on the good day. Right. And it's like all the like really shitty days that you show up and you do the work anyways. Like that's what everybody shows up on a good day. Right. It is. It's a fascinating line. I mean, you're rewarded for your hard work you know it's a the sports developed i mean that that's that's all there but i just i'm a huge sports fan so it's always fascinating to me because it's like you know 
golfers go through their own strife in in you know competition uh you know uh, baseball players but none of them you know track and field i guess you could relate a little but there's like a single domain and it's you know short you know short time domains or whatever but you guys like really choose hard you know it, it you know that you know and i think we've all talked about it once like if you're not on that line of like absolute bedlam you know and, and devastation you know you're probably not there right so it's just it's fascinating to me because i mean daily you show up to really kick yourself in, in the crotch you know like, yeah i mean it's like i i think because like we chose this sport over anything else you know it might have something to do with you know you had a touch of like instant success and you're like oh i'm, I'm good at this you know it's it's not often that you hate something that you're amazing at um but, you know, you, as crazy as it sounds, like you sort of learn to love that, the like pushing yourself, finding the pain doesn't seem to hurt quite as much. So you amp it up a little bit more, um, you know, something as simple as like rowing intervals. You know, when I first got into the sport, I hated the rower. You know, I just I didn't have the technique for it. My body's not built for it. It was just something that I wasn't good at at all. Um, and I literally did it until I was excited that I would see it show up in a workout. Like there's a 500 meter in the middle and I'm like, oh good, I'm, I'm gonna hit that, you know? Like I've gotten to the point that I'm good enough at it that I'm starting to enjoy it. And you just do that with every movement, you know? It's, if you hate something, it's probably not because you're amazing at it. Yeah, and I think you just learn to celebrate little things. Like it, you know, when you show up to an event and everything goes well and you win, like it feels awesome. And you're like, yeah, that was why I did all that stuff. It's like, this is sweet. Mm -hmm. The payoff is, is awesome. Mm -hmm. But you have to, if you're always looking for that, it's going to be really hard to show up. Right. So it's little things like Matt says, like, okay, like I'm going to down split my rowing today, like by one second per interval and see how I hold that. Yeah. And you know, like today's the day, like, oh, I did it. It felt good. Like awesome. And there's so many areas to learn. Like when I got into it, hell, I came from a sport where I fell on my head like a hundred times a day. So like anything's better than that. <laughs> and then you, you just like, there's a lot of things to learn. Like I was like, you know, leaps and bounds ahead of anybody in gymnastics movements, but like that's one tiny piece of the puzzle. And then you're like, shit, you throw a barbell in my hand and I can't function. I'm like, this sucks. Um, like I need to figure out how to be better at this. And there's a lot of things to keep you engaged. So I've always found that there's a lot of, because there's so many balls to keep in the air, it's hard to get bored. And that was sort of what I needed when I came into it was like, you know, I was sort of like toiling away, working out because I thought I should after I had retired from my sports. And like it just sort of regave me a purpose. And I found it super engaging because I like to learn new things and challenge myself. And I think you need that personality trait or you won't you won't last or you won't enjoy it the same way. Um, enjoy sharpening the yeah, tools. And the, I, yeah, I, I, I mean, you can still get a good toolbox, workout yeah. in, but I think that that, that is a big part of it is like willingness to figure out how do I do this better? How do I? Yeah, I think kind of what Pat touched on was, you know, you set up your daily goals or, you know, like for the next three months, I want to work on my rowing. So, you know, if your overall goal is to be to win the games at the end of the year and you that's all you're thinking of every single day. Every day when you leave the gym, you go, all right, my goal was to win the games. Did I do that? Nope, I failed. Today was a failure. Today was a failure. Every day, like if that's your only goal, right? every day is a failure, it's going to be pretty discouraging. But then if you focus in on a specific thing where it's like, okay, I want to get better at rowing, you know, you set up a specific like 2K time. It's like, all right, to hit that 2K time, I need to do these 500 meter intervals and I want to hold like negative splits through the whole thing. Then you're able to leave the gym and like you achieve something. You you right. hit off a tiny piece of that goal. You can pat yourself on the back. It's that daily dose of achievement and that's what feels good. And then all those little little tiny building blocks build up to the bigger end goal. But you know, you got to give yourself something that you can achieve on a daily basis. And that's why the two of you are at the pinnacle of the sport. No question about it. Well, one of us. <laughs> oh, there it is. There's a little jab, which we're actually over an hour in. I do want to show sure one video that I'm sure it's one that you've seen. Can you believe it's been already over an hour? Time flies. But anyway, I'm going to pull up one video here that you guys can recall. Apologies for... Is it us falling off a cargo net? It is. It is. It's your favorite video, isn't it? <laughs> How did I know that? How did you? Let's do when this video came out. Sammy must have played it 50 times. That was the best car ride. Oh. Let's, let's, let's make it big this for those is, of you at home. This is, 
How about can we can we commentate this actually? Can this, someone tell us not me? But can can you guys oh, 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 describe oh, what we're looking Matt at? Who is it who fell gen- first? Gently put down. Oh, 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 that one looked way worse. So I actually, I actually tore my hip flexor a bit. No, on that. that fall. So it was after like when Pat's and like when we finish the event and we go back to like the warm up area and the medical team's there and Pat's crying like a little baby. Yeah, Castro actually came up to me. And was like, yo, what, you injured? And I was like, nope. And he's like, like, bullshit, you're lying. Do you think he wanted to pull you? He wanted, like, me to get medically checked out. And and he was like, no, like, you're lying. You you took that fall, you're hurt. And I was like, no, dude, I'm good. And he started, like, kind of, like, grabbing my shoulders <laughs> and, like, seeing if I flinched anywhere. And I was like, don't touch my hip, don't touch my hip. And, like, it was all black and blue. Because, so, <laughs> like, the reason... The reason I hit the ground gently was because my foot caught at the last minute and my hip was flexed. My foot no. caught and it just ripped it straight. And so, it like, it was all black and blue down my hip. And I was like... The next day? Or uh, no, after? pretty quickly after. Um, nice. But on the, on the way home from that event, so, like, this is fret, like, happened earlier that day we're driving back to the hotel amazing and sammy's watching the fluffy duck video of the american sniper shooting the two of us <laughs> I should have and she that's the one is I should have showed. cackling oh, in the back no. seat it just that was yeah. being passed around i mean yeah, no no, no like, she, she watched it like Keith's 10 like, times first thing he's like hey are you okay i'm like yeah yeah he's like okay great you gotta see this <laughs> 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 like oh thanks pal matt came back to the athlete area and he's like o'keefe uh Pat's coughing blood up. You better find his family. And I was like, what? So the context of it for, from our perspective was we were all watching in the, the outdoor stadium. Yeah, and the screen went the dead. The screen right? went dead. Yeah. And so, you know, we heard some oohs and ahs, and we are like, yeah, whatever. He mosey back to the athlete area, and he came back, and he's like, Pat's dead over there. You know, I was like, what happened? <laughs> well, and like, we both finished well, so, okay, fine. Was, like, was Matt, this? Matt came second, and I was fourth. Like, yeah, we like, both we both fin- finished We both finished top. fine. So I think people were like, yeah, okay. Um, was this the workout that I did a full workout right before going out on the competition floor. Oh, that's an amazing story. What? Please tell it. Yeah. So this is a great story. This is 2018 game. So yep. this is, we had the marathon row yep. Wednesday night. Yep. Wednesday night. Then we had Thursday off. Yep. And then we competed. This was on Friday. And so after the marathon row, like you're just like, you're breathing dead air for three hours of just everyone's sweat and filth and, so, anyways, I was trying to. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I Man, end up. Matt's lake of fucking sweat was like. I end up getting my, my rower. <laughs> I was like, get yeah, out of here. I had a pool of sweat underneath me. It was disgusting. You, Everybody's you drank, like, convinced seven that water bottles in the I drank first hour. Eleven liters of water in the first like hour and a half. Everybody's convinced you were peeing, but yeah, yeah, like, uh, but anyways. So, anyways, I get sick after that. Like the next day, it's just like I'm no. all stuffed up and whatever. And so I'm talking to Curtis, the guy who runs the drug testing. Valor, okay. And I'm basically like sending, like I'm, I think I'm in the drugstore and I'm sending him pictures of every to make sure cold medicine. Yeah. And I'm like, what's okay for me to take? What's not? I'm zapping this thing. And so he's telling me like, yep, that's okay. That's okay. That's like, I think most of them were okay. But anyways. So the morning before I compete, I'm like, okay, I need to take some cold medicine so I can get through today. And I was like, if one serving of cold medicine is good, 10 is great. Like, I'll feel no, really you good. you back 10, the whole bottle? I mean, like, I, I took too much. Um, I took too much of this cold medicine. Drowsy? And drowsy is an effect? I, I would well, not. I, I, was, I was pretty drunk. Like, <laughs> not drunk. Well, yeah. I, like I'm not drunk, not any. drunk, but like. See now, was, show the part where he's spinning around on the rope again. <laughs> I think we're getting there. I so it was, it was. This makes a lot more sense. <laughs> so we're, see, we're, I have no excuse. We're in, I the, just, I we're just in the athlete area, and and I'm kind of sitting there and like, okay, this is probably like an hour before the event, and O'Keefe's like, "Yo, are you okay?" I'm like, "I don't huh. feel so good." <laughs> Groggy. And, he, and he's like, "Did how much cold medicine did you take?" And I was like, "No, eh, no, good oh, amount." It. And and he's like. <laughs> Oh my God, like you can't compete. Like you need to like get this out of your system. And so I put on like two full track suits, like sweat suits. Oh my God. And I did a 30 minute EMOM on the rower, bike and ski erg. 
Man. And like I'm sweating through both uh, sweatsuits. I'm getting looks from people in the warm up area of like, like what, what are you doing? No, you confused you thoroughly and, confused every competitor. And, and, and O'Keefe's just sitting there like, Come on, man, you're doing great, you're doing great. Come on. <laughs> like, what, is wrong? what is different about what Matt He's does than everyone else? Faster. Everyone else now thinks they have to do the same. They're like, I guess I gotta do what Matt does. Let me get on the road. No, it legit. was a thirty minute like aggressive EMOM uh to try to like snap me out of it. And it, and it worked. It felt great for the event. Uh, that had no no reason of why I fell, but like I think it was just kind of a funny oh, story. Well, it was supposed before. to be the flip. It was supposed to be the flip over, and then that. Well, yeah, we weren't allowed at the last minute. No, I saw you guys practicing. That, that was the rule. No, right? so what what, we weren't allowed what I was trying to do here was like yeah, so we weren't allowed to do the front somersault over, but on top of the net, grab grab like a couple rungs down, like as low as you can grab, and then literally just f- fall. And then when your body swings into the net and, and it off. bounces you oh, out okay. and then you just let go. But funny, we were both drop. trying to do the same thing. We were both we trying to do this off. But oh. then did a nice like, job. because you grab, like you're basically pulling the cargo net up a little before. bit yeah. so you can grab lower. So your your free fall isn't as far. But then I think it, I'm assuming it's because we had weight vests on. You're f- yeah, and it could you be. Free I mean, fall, there's like, also more people on the net. Yeah. So you could so have had somebody climbing probably up Probably a combination of reasons of... You're basically trying to free fall two or three feet, catch yourself, and then bounce off the net and jump to the ground. Right. And then I didn't hang on. So, like, when I, as soon as the weight hit my hands, it just slipped out and I no. just free fell. I think Pat got a bit of a bounce off of it, but then his foot got caught. Yeah, when I so. went out, mine was like... <laughs> Cause I can't. I climbed closer to the side, and they had those black markers where if you touch outside the marker, you have to. It's no rep. Like you repeat the obstacle, and I for some reason I was being courteous and I went close to the side because there was another athlete coming up behind me. So I went up, and then when I went to go turn over, I turned to the outside, and my hands were like right on the black basically, and I was like, uh oh. So I had to like choke up and do this really awkward roll over. So it made me it like threw me in a weird position coming over that I was wasn't used to, like not what we'd practiced ever. And then, yeah, I kind of hit awkwardly and tied up one foot, but was like in the rhythm of that movement was like, yeah, okay, in and out and let go. And I just like let let go and felt my foot still hook. And I was like, no, (laughs) (laughs) I had already hands had already let go. And I was like, well, (laughs) going down hard. And Knock. yeah, I like hit like slap down right on my side pretty hard. And my judge, the judge that was right by was like already oh. running over to me like, oh my God. And you I got right back I'm up. like, I'm fine. I fully knocked the wind out of myself though. But you're able like, to get up I mean, like we, we both pop, like, right back hit, up. popped well, up, you finished. Can't, you again. know what's a stake? Unless you yeah, want to get carried off. Like, yeah, I'm, if it wasn't bad enough that I'm going to get carried off, like you better get up and start running again. I mean, and the, the big thing to be concerned about too is like if the doctor thinks you're not medically fit to continue – you Poor can't continue. Like I've had it before. Where I had other injuries and I just kept it hush hush. I'm like, no, I'm not telling anyone. Secret. Like part of it is like, I don't want any of the sharks smelling the blood in the water. True. And then the other part is like, I don't want to be medically pulled. So it's like, I'm, I'm just going to try to tough through this and, and keep going. I'm trying to think if anyone else has been, I know that on the team side a few years ago, I think Miranda. Aldridge. Yeah. She got pulled in the NorCal to do that final workout without her, which mm-hmm. automatically basically disqualified them. Yeah. Um, like, what what was the year that I've I, been threatened with it twice? Oh yeah. What was what was the year that uh, I tore my knee? That was first year in Madison. 17. Yeah, seventeen. Yeah, I tore my LCL, and then the head, the head of the medical staff, uh, is a member at CrossFit New England, and that's where I was training a lot at the time. And so I met with him right after the games. I had him it's look the at the rocket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Sean Rocket. Yeah, Sean. And uh, I had him look at the scans, and uh, and he's like, "Oh man, like when did this happen?" And I was like, "Ah, day one." And and he was like, "Oh yeah, he got back into training too soon, huh?" And like hit it a bit too. Like he thought it was day one back training after the mm. games, and I was like, "No, no, no, day one of the games." Oh wow! And and he was like, "Why did you not come to me? I would have like given you a brace. I would have done something for you." And I was like, "I'm not taking Can't the let ch- know. I'm not taking the chance of you medical pulling me of just like yo like something in your knee completely tore. Like we have to pull you. So, well, I mean, yeah. it, it worked. It was fine. Yeah, it worked out. Yeah, um, don't have to worry about like it. I had to do a couple months in a brace to let it heal. You but did after. Yeah, after. yeah, I was like four months. Yeah, about that. In a full... Yeah, I remember seeing you at Granite Games when I was there with Paul and Albert. Yeah, yeah. Like, I just wore pants for four months and kept, like, this full brace. So it was like, if I 
sat down, you know, like the two horns, the brackets of the knee piece would like stick out. But if I were just standing, no one Nobody could tell. Knew. You kept it hush hush, right? Yeah, yeah, I didn't For the tell most part. Did it, it, did it come out later on that you had that? I don't remember. I, I know I've, publicly. I've said it. I just don't remember casually it, like, before, yeah. but like yeah, I think it did. Somewhere. After the four yeah. months, people were you, you didn't get it repaired though. Did you? you just let it heal? No, no. So LCL is like one of the few that will repair itself. Yeah, yeah. And so they told me they're like, you know, wear the brace. You know, this you is your keep it in place. this is your protocol for rehab or you know just basically staying off of it. And then they're like, we'll check on it in four months and hopefully it heals itself. And if not, then we'll look at surgery. So luckily, yeah. it nice fully repaired and everything's great. You know, and you've never felt better. Yeah, you're stronger never than you've ever better. been. Yeah. He's, he's prodding. He wants to get some insider info. Sleep good. Feel Anyways, strong. which knee was it again? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. Just Tanya getting used his left knee. Tanya Hardy. <laughs> I feel like you know, in you know, we can. These are for you know another episode too. But there's so many fascinating behind the scenes stories. Dude, there's so the games. yeah. It's like I, I feel like there's a lot of funny ones. There that really like is. That's what I want to hear. Just athletes are I'm sure just kind of nervous to talk about because like they don't want to like offend anyone or like upset the person the story's about but like that workout right there like cole sager was like fighting in that workout like, oh, yeah. Yeah. That, that that's gone blown out of no proportion. it was I, like cole like nudged to do and everyone's like cole's ready to fight yeah i know but you know what i, I want to see him just come unglued one day it's gonna happen <laughs> he's he's just i like, thought old george like, sterner was gonna get blown over this year <laughs> but there was like the bike what the, was that in the rock run Oh yeah, a Sterner was like ahead of him in that last like hundred meter stretch, like in the stadium, really? and like didn't have the gas because Cole's yeah. coming on hard like a train, and so he tried to just like angle him, and Cole's Wrecked just him? like <laughs> gave him the old like, like I, I kind of swim move, like pushed him out to the side. There's a little side. bit of intention. Right. I, I, I one hundred yeah, percent box someone out this year at the games. Yeah. Well, well, what was the twenty minute AMRAP? What's it called? Mary. Mary. Mary yep. Uh, when we transitioned, oh, when you moved, I was like, "How'd you box someone out and marry?" <laughs> when you moved to the, it was a so power we, move after 15 rounds, and you moved to the next rig, and like I started walking, I get my t-shirt, I'm patting off my face, and I'm taking a sip of water, and I'm like, "Dude, like I'm really hot right now. Like I just want to take a second to breathe." And I see Hepner coming up behind me, and as soon as we got to the point where it's like bottlenecked in, where we walked through the rigs, I like basically stopped. I was, I was like, I don't want you passing me, so I'm just gonna block. Three. I'm just sure gonna down. block it. And Man, then he came did up that to... in the in the trail run in 16. When he got some of those narrow passages, they just walk because no yeah. one could pass them. And I was like, Yeah, and I was so frustrated. And Hepner came up to me after, and he's like, Yo, did you intentionally box me out when I was walking by? I was like, Oh yeah, 100. Like, percent I saw you there. I wasn't gonna let you pass me. <laughs> you think that was an accident? No way. <laughs> that is epic. That but yeah, like the trail run. That's why, like, yeah, the paid small, to get out in front. The small group of us just like hurried up out front like yeah i didn't realize it until after like when you're watching the fittest film and it's like it comes to a bottleneck where it's like a bit of a drop off yeah. and there's just a clump of 30 people yeah standing. see and like i, I like, didn't everybody to start i was like they're starting way too fast clearly nobody's ever done a trail run before yeah and then like that was probably like a kilometer in and i was like oh like yeah and then i'm just like standing like this like yeah. In a line, like waiting, waiting to get in, like pace. heart rates back down to like yeah. nothing. By the time you get through, it's like, wow. So it actually, you could have ran as hard as you wanted and then slowed the entire person down, got full rest, slowed the whole field down, and then gone through and picked yeah. up. Like, smart. And just we been do in need first. more events like that. <laughs> just when you don't know, when you don't know the, style. the path, you're just exactly. like, ah. yeah. I, I remember with that, like, I was kind of chatting with Josh beforehand and. You know, they're making it sound super treacherous. So like, you know, you need to wear your cargo pants and your oh, boots yeah. and all this. And I was like, Josh, are you are you going to wear the boots? And he's like, I'd rather run in, in wet shoes than dry boots. And I was like, OK, yeah, perfect. It's like, <laughs> <That's> well <laughs> cool. put. And then something else about like the poison oak and that type of thing. Yeah, and yeah. it was just like, well, if you see poison, like don't rub up against the vegetation. Yeah, I'm not going to be running. in. You the have time grass. to get the poison oak off you. Yeah, you can go take before a, it. Before it like turns into really? a turns reaction, into a, yeah, yeah. If you go take a cold shower and like really scrub yourself oh, within man. like twenty four hours, you usually can get that stuff. So I thought I know that. I've always thought like I was immune to like poison ivy and all that stuff because like all my friends would get it. like we'd be playing in the woods and they would all get it and I would I've never gotten it. It was last summer I got. I'm not sure if it was poison <laughs> weren't, ivy weren't or poison hard. oak or like whatever it was, but I finally got poison ivy last summer and it was like the most miserable experience of my life. Yeah, it's I rough. had it all over legs, body, whole everything, thing. Every, oh, everything, everything. What were you doing? <laughs> I was brush. I was like brushing out my property. 
Like I cleared like an acre yeah. or two. Like why? Naked. How did you get it? Once you, no, my once you, once you get the oil on your hands, it was on my hands. Boom! It's everywhere. It was on my hands, and then just like anything you touch, now oh, yeah, gets yeah. it. And like Sam and I had a wedding to go to, and I had to wear a suit. It was miserable. Oh, like suits. No. I'd love to see you yeah. in a suit. Oh, I, I I pictures, pictures of that. Of that? I, I clean up well. We got him in a suit recently did to go to the White House. Yeah, for the White House. Oh, what a <laughs> shit experience that's the that next, was. That's the next episode. We, um, you know, I know you want to probably yeah, wrap up. Yeah, no, right? I mean, we're, I we're just, at two hours, and I think we could talk four hours. I know you guys have some other things planned. What actually is on the agenda for the rest of your weekend here in Miami? That's probably going to go up after the I fact. Mean, we, eat food and be merry. Yeah. Train some yeah. more together or no? I don't know. Probably don't yeah, I think time. so. Like, I'm, I'm sure we'll, like, we both have gigs. Like, we're both yeah, in Matt's Miami to, to, to do some so work. We'll see when we can um, get it. But, yeah, we both have gigs lined up for like a couple hours here a couple hours there so i mean we'll, we'll see, see we when we can out. overlap so your last little bit of being friends until you guys don't see each other again yeah. until the next competition <laughs> well, well, well just you know quickly before we close up what's the plan this year like where where, where, where are people going to find you uh still available on the internet <laughs> <laughs> aside that hasn't from social media yeah. <laughs> this internet fad has yeah, like where, 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 you, where what, what's the season look like for you guys uh, I'm gonna do Dubai this year. It's my first time doing Dubai, so cool. It'll be Pat's fun. Doing That'll be fun. Dubai, Granite Games, Waterpalooza, the Mayan Classic. <laughs> <laughs> Just playing all the loud live season. events. Every loud live event, and then anything with over a twenty thousand dollar cash prize. Yeah, catch me on the competition floor. I on the other hand, I on the other hand, I'm going to China. I want to rain on Brent's parade. Nice. Uh, <laughs> you heard it I, want, I want Brent to have some competition in China, so I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be amazing. Can't tell if he's being serious or not. <laughs> See, it's the Never problem know. you to know. The problem is he has to Brent to find out. He has to basically forfeit an open spot in order to go to China and take Brent's spot. So, <laughs> otherwise, it'll just trickle down to Brent anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was last year. Like we were texting at the end of the open, and we we're both just like, I think you texted me like, "Yo, you want to pull the shoots on the open?" Like we both have spots. Like you did Wadapalooza, yeah, I yeah. Dubai. So then, if we both if we both qualified out of the open, our spots from the sanctionals trickle down to the next person. Right. Pat was like, yo, you want to rain on some people's parades and just let's just pull the shoot on the open. Let's just not oh, submit a final like score. Not submit a last work. I'm like, just kidding. <laughs> and then like whoever's in that bottom spot. There was some skepticism around some people doing that, but you guys ended up doing it anyway. So that's good. Is that still in the, in the plans potentially for this year? What's pull the plug on one of the open workouts? Oh, maybe. <laughs> who knows? I might have to wait till the end to, to see, see who's who. in line. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can't wait. No, because now you don't. There's no sanctioned events first, right? So you don't know who's going to trickle yeah. down. That's true. That was the thing is last year you had several events before the open. Yeah. So there was a weird like reverse backfill happening. Yeah, it was. Strange. But now once you go to the events, everybody already knows who's got a spot. So yep. you basically know who's out of the running, and then you can just it's more yeah. black and white. But back then it was like you could. Like, I remember retroactively be like, hey, well, <laughs> like like so for us it was at Wadapalooza, Noah would have been getting the trickle down. And it was, so if I just like, if I didn't qualify through the open, Noah would have to well, go compete Wait, no. somewhere else. Yeah. Right. And he was doing that anyway, but it was just like, yeah, then, but it if I just, make it, it in, was just then a he's funny, good. funny we're just idea like, of it. We're just looking at it because of all the, the way the open was set up and the way the, the new system was like brand new and no one really knew how these backfills are working. We were just kind of dissecting it and we're like, this is weird. Like <laughs> we like have, way more we actually have a reasonable amount of control over like somebody else's season. Yeah, right Pat, now. Pat's like, like, I feel, I feel like I'm in the driver's seat here. <laughs> <laughs> I have control over someone else's uh, season. Yeah. Yeah. Was it fifth? I think the fifth place female at Wadapalooza actually ended up earning the spot. Well, yeah, I'm pretty sure Dubai it, like it went down to like nine. nine. Yeah, it was deep. There's a few. <clears throat> yeah, there's a Rogue few competitions. on the women's side. I don't like, even think we still like know routine. on some of the events. Who, yeah, like Rogue. Yeah, could, we could, we could Rogue had making. potential. I think of the twenty, there was fourteen people that were already qualified, or thirteen, and so it's like it had potential to go down to fourteen. But Chandler did really well. I think he got fifth. Yeah, so I went the to women him. Was lower though. At Rogue, lower. yep. Yeah. So it's just like you know that was. Interesting hypotheticals from last year. This year's much more clear cut, but clear as mud, you know. But yeah, anyway, <laughs> I'll be at Dubai. I'll probably be at Rogue again. I think I'll come back and do Wadapalooza and uh, come play the course that I won last year. And then <laughs> I might do West Coast because it's close now that I'm on the West. I'm yeah. on the West Coast. It's gonna be a fun one. But, I can't yeah. wait. For and that it's one. just a coincidence that these are all the competitions with big prize money. Complete coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> you won't compete. No, you no you guys shame. won't go head to head. There's no chance of you guys going head to head in a sanctional. Oh no, we probably will. Yeah, I'm sure we will. I don't rogue, know. Other, I than rogue, okay, other than rogue, uh, probably yeah. rogue. Are you not doing Dubai this year? No. Okay. No. Sweet. Well, haven't those scores been submitted? Like you had to submit your scores, right? For last week. 
Oh, the past winners getting. But, well, no, I, I have an invite for, because for you guys, yeah, Dubai sponsored winner. one of the events at the games. Oh, you want which so one? That was it. It was the one with the pegboard and the dumbbell snatches. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So T yeah. and I each won that. But I think we you got, win. I think because you won Dubai, you also get to go back. I think oh, that's okay. a rule too. Yeah. Either yeah. way, you get your base covered. Yeah. Just in case but you I, I, mind. I think, I think just given the timing of the season, I probably take won't. take some off season after the open. Yeah, I didn't have enough off season. I want more. <laughs> One more. <laughs> two, two months. months always wants He'll come down to Waterpalooza and heckle you from the side. Oh, no. I'm He's like, building I'll, the rig. I'll, I'll be yeah, at, what lane yeah. is Velner going to be in and like loosen up the pull-up bar? <laughs> oh, I'll be at Waterpalooza. I will 100% be here a week early to help set up rigs. <laughs> yes. I can't wait. Um, but in terms of other sanctionals, I don't, I don't know. Like, I know Mayhem has one that. It's like I live. Yeah, if you're there anyway. I live 2.8 miles yeah, away. So Are they using the open as a qualifier? I think so, yeah. Just get a special invite? Probably not. Is Rich putting up the prize money for that? I, I don't I think there no is idea. prize money. I don't know. I, yeah, I don't about know either. The event, actually. You're just Googling it. I'd go if it was. I was. That's <laughs> <laughs> like, wait, 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 how He's much? trying to talk. He just, no, Pat just wants Rich's money. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it. You're putting it up out of pocket. <laughs> that would be hilarious. It'd be a great twist. <laughs> well, I think on that note, guys, we're going to call it. I think this is already going to be broken up into two episodes. Thank you guys so much for coming on the inaugural Loud and Live Sports Podcast. Been a fun no two sweat. hours. Yeah. Know, yeah, right? Yeah, in and out. Guys. We could go for another Let's two hours, I think. Definitely. Order food next time. Yeah. Yes. Ooh, so right that'll right do it for the first episode, guys. You can follow us on all the major platforms. Make sure to follow these two and Chief Keefe as well. We are done with Chief episode Keith. one. <laughs> That's the best nickname ever. Okay. <laughs>